one story. I mean, I get to file in person, so I'll have to talk fast because it's after me. Claustrophobia has long been a part of the human experience from the Crow Magnon all the way up to Freud. So if you ever happen to find yourself underground, and I mean deep underground, don't linger in the shadows. Dr. James Verheiden, three PhDs in geology and well-known seismic expert, was poking around in an undeveloped tunnel of the underground Marymount Archive mine complex. Verheiden knew instantly he had found something extraordinary. So did his tool packer, Howard Kimper. That's what people would say about him at his funeral. <laughs> 10 a.m., one day after the death of Howard Kimper, in the same underground complex, only this time Sector M. Business as usual, all except for journeyman electrician Larry Coogan. Coogan had complained to his friends that he didn't like working so far underground. He said it felt like working a tomb. Today he would learn how right he was. <laughs> of the case was Lieutenant Irene Lamont. She was a fast riser, a one-woman phenomenon of the Chicago PD. Her detractors said Irene's success was owed only to her looks and her alluring femininity. Her supporters were usually too moonstruck to say anything. Lieutenant Lamont, why are you holding back details on this death? Lieutenant? Oh, Brian, why so formal? Well, Irene, it's just the department's attitude is hard to understand on this. <sighs> You haven't answered the man's question yet, Lieutenant. Just what is the police department's involvement with routine industrial accidents, anyway? Routine investigation, Ant. Everything's routine around here, Lieutenant. You're getting in a rut. Oh, not me, Carl. No. Speak for yourself. Hey, listen, fellas. My desk is piled up with work in there. If I don't get to it, they're going to boot me back to traffic. Now, would you really want that to happen? <laughs> Hate to see you back in uniform, if that's what you mean, Irene. Thanks, Ed. Oh, well, you do, you, you snook! Hey, he's up on her, Kolchak. She's just doing her job. Yeah, sure, yeah. So was Adolf Eichmann. Oh. Listen, Kolchak, I'd like to take the lady out. You do anything to bring her down on reporters, you'll have to send away for mail order teeth. You <laughs> dummy. Dum dum. Dum dum. All right, Lieutenant. Let's talk turkey. Now. Carl, I like you. I really do. I mean, I like your style. I like your savoir-faire. I like your, your directness, the way you take over a situation. I even like the way you dress. Yeah, yeah, okay, but... But we've got nothing to talk about. Okay, Irene. I like you, too. 
I like your nose and your eyes and your earlobes and, and all of that, okay? So, now, because we like each other so much, why don't you elucidate the rumors that I've heard about you not allowing the relatives to identify the bodies? There you go. You see, that's how rumors get started. Now, in fact, we had identified the bodies from the ID they were carrying. We didn't forbid the relatives from seeing the bodies. It's just that they were, well, they were so badly mangled that we thought we would, well, save them all that misery and anguish. Yeah. Why haven't you told us anything about the way they were killed or what the accidents were or what? Carl, when you're dealing with the Marymount Archive Corporation, yeah. well, there are very special problems. I mean, they store corporate records. They even store records for the federal government. Uh-huh. I mean, now we are just following ordinary security precautions. Oh. Well, what ordinary security precautions? What? Well, whose? Carl, I really am terribly busy and I can't go into it now. I have an awful lot of things to do. Yeah, yeah, right, right. You're, you're going to be late for the autopsy report on the electrician, right? Right. Right. Carl! Autopsy of Lawrence Earl Coogan, conducted by Lamar Beckwith, assisted by Doctors Gordon Phillips, Doctor uh, 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 Koshakovsky. I uh, knew here. I just transferred him into lock, and I'm uh, told to come down and observe your procedures. Doctor, why are you wearing a mask? I have a cold. Well, please step back a little. I'm very susceptible. Yes, of course, certainly. Seventy-one inches and three quarters. Well, it looks like our dear coroner wants a little privacy. Mm. Just like the first man. Deep puncture marks like, like teeth. Teeth? Did you say teeth? Yes, teeth. And not dog's teeth either. These teeth marks are not those of a mammal, but of a reptile. This man was bitten to death by a crocodile? Well, it's Wednesday. I think I'll go on the golf course and hit a bucket of balls. Thank you, gentlemen, for your assistance. underground storage vaults packed with computer tapes bearing corporate records from three continents. Preservation through perpetuity was the company motto. Uh, excuse me. Can I help you, sir? Well, I certainly hope so. Yes, my company's interested in leasing storage space here. How soon can I get an estimate? I've got to catch the five o'clock plane for Winnipeg. Well, we can see to it that you catch that big bird with plenty of time to spare. Splendid. I'm Jack Flaherty. I'm the vice president and general sales manager. Uh-huh. Where yes. did you say the name of your firm was? International Nickel Syndicate, uh, INS. It's Carl Kolchak. Oh, I don't think I ever heard of that before. Well, we're a new, young, glowing cartel. I just got it from Santiago. Oh, well, precious metals do command quite a bit of respect these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, are we going down? 
Oh, well, I'll tell you, Mr. Kolchak, this is a very bad day for us. You see, we're opening up a new sector, and it's quite Jack, messy. I said I'm in a very big rush. I told you I just got in from Santiago. I've got to get up to Winnipeg, and then I go on from there to Hongshu, and then back to Albuquerque. Yes, but, but I'll tell you, Mr. Kolchak, I can give you an estimate, you see, and then you can see the facilities another time. Well, there is no other time, unfortunately, you see. It doesn't matter, though. You've got to break eggs in order to make an omelet. Come on, Jack. You better brace yourself. We're descending at the rate of 200 feet per second, Mr. Kolchak. Oh, yeah, Carl, Carl. Don't tell me. Tell my stomach, Mr. Flaherty. Oh, you can call me Jack. Jack? Jack? Well, you'll be glad to know we've reached the 10,000-foot level. We're decelerating. 10,000 feet? Mm. You know, the services that we can offer you, Carl, are quite varied. Uh. You see, we have the conventional microdot storage mm. and the magnetic tape in our computer banks. We even have the more advanced space-saving magnetic disks. Oh, really? That's terrific. We can use all of it. All of it. Uh. Uh. You'll find our facilities here are quake-proof, flood-proof, and could even withstand nuclear holocaust. Oh, yeah, you mean when everything turns glass upstairs, and Ma Bell will still be able to tell us our phone bill is, isn't it? Well, Mr. Flaherty, how do you like it, huh? Like what, Chapman? Oh, you haven't answered your phone messages lately, huh? Well, when you do, you'll find there's a calling from our union liaison man. Look, me and my men ain't gonna work down this place the way things have been going on unless we get extra compensation. That's fine, Chapman, but I don't think that this is the time or the place to discuss union management relations. Yeah, that's fine. Wait till you hear our package of demands. It's this recession that's got everybody in a bad mood. What recession? like coal shacks, yellow submarine. Come on. Come in here wearing a seersucker suit with red hair. There was a Mr. Kolchak. I believe he was with the nickel firm in New Mexico. He's got nothing to do with nickel. He's the proverbial bad penny. Now, where is he? You name it, we store it. Everything from the family jewels to corporate tax records to private property deeds. And it's all handled in the strictest of confidence. Yeah, speaking of confidence, uh, I heard you had a little of trouble down here. Oh, yes, very unfortunate. However, I'm not at liberty to discuss it, you know, insurance regulations. Yeah, but I hear a man was killed. I mean, mauled badly. Yes, well, in an operation of this sort, Carl, one has to expect one or two industrial accidents. Yes, of course, certainly. Uh, yeah, what's down there, hmm? Oh, j just some more data. You see, some of our clients desire optimum security. Oh, uh, your client's a tall fellow with a tall white hat and stars and stripes and a white beard named Sam. <laughs> Boy, you are astute, Carl. <laughs> so are you, Jack. <laughs> hey, why don't you come on over here and I'll show you our nerve center. I've been asking for it till I'm blue in the face. It's going to be Utah all over again. Did I even... Did I ever tell you what happened to me in Utah? Only a few times. Well, he just doesn't understand. Yo, this is it. Oh, yeah. Well, speak of the devil and he shall appear. Just when do I get my locks changed on my office and storeroom? Now, I put the working order in. I'm doing everything I can. Now, don't you think you're just being a little oversensitive? Paranoid? I said oversensitive. Paranoid? Is that what you're trying to say? There are no paranoids in the Soviet Union. Do you know why? Because everybody there is being watched and plotted against. Only the insane man feels secure. And it's the same thing in here. Mysterious occurrences. Strange people who aren't what they appear to be. For example, just who are you? Dr. Verheiden, please, this is a potential new client. And I am Mickey Mantle. You're in on this. You're in on this. And if you're not, you're a pathetic judge of character. Now look, I don't have to take that from you. Get the locks changed or I'll go over your head. I'm sorry about that. Oh, forget it. I know someone almost just like him. Uh, who is he? 
Dr. James Verheiden, honcho of the government seismic lab. This is a good place for long-range quake readings. We're in a very stable area. Yes, but the question is, is the doctor himself stable? <laughs> uh, yeah. so, who was he talking about when he said that people aren't what they appear to be? Oh, forgive my manners. Carl Kolchak, this is Ruth Van Gallen. She's the director of our data storage. She's going to be putting the whole history of your company on tape. No, no, she's not. No, no, not the whole history. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you some of the hardware. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, the A52. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Jack, yes. it's for you. Excuse me. Mm. Top side. Thanks. Yes. Lieutenant Lamont? Well, I've been walking the facility with a new customer. Put her on. Yes, Lieutenant, this is Jack Flaherty. Well, yes, he is. As a matter of fact, he's right here with me. fast around here are accidents. Bang, bang. Yeah. Oh, them just like that. What do you think caused those accidents? You ain't no buyer. You're right. You're absolutely right. I'm, uh, I'm down here undercover. Well, you're too late. I had a lot to tell you police yesterday, but nobody ever listens to me. I'm not a cop. Do I look like a cop? Then who are you? Come on. My name's Carl Kolshak. I'm an insurance investigator. Now, if you can help me, I, uh, I can make it worth your while. How do you know how much my while is worth? <laughs> Very good. Okay. I make more than that in 10 minutes. How about two of them? All right. Now, uh, that first man to die, uh, uh, Kimper, was that his name? Yeah, exactly what happened. Nobody really knows, except that he worked for that uh, Dr. Verheiden. That eight ball. Yeah, that doctor does seem to have some problems. My heart bleeds. Look, and I got problems, too. They're coming out of my ears. Yeah, I'm sure. You know what the big tragedy in his life is? No. No. He used to teach college, right? He was out in Utah, and he uncovers these valuable rocks. Well, it was a feather in his cap. As far as I'm concerned, a rock is a rock. Anyway, he crates these rocks, and he's going to send them east on a flat car. <laughs> well, along comes this other geologist erases Verheiden's name from the crates, puts his own name on the crates, and has them shipped back to himself. He gets all the credit. That's why Verheiden goes around crying the blues. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me, where was Kemper's body found? Sector R, Swillhole. Swillhole. Yeah, it's a natural rock tunnel. Hasn't been used since salt mining days. There's a couple of hot springs down there have caused a lot of seepage. They can't store their valuable computer tapes in a steam bath. The electrician, was his name Coogan? Uh, was he killed in Sector R2? No. His body was found in Sector M. Uh-huh. And where's Sector M? Have they changed the alphabet? No. Well, then M comes before R. Sector M is on the way to Sector R, that's all. <laughs> sure. Now oh, what? That phony alarm. They want me and my men to go around looking for trespassers. You know something? I am not in security. I'm going to call the union the first thing tomorrow morning. You mark my words. Yeah, uh, excuse me. H how do I get out to uh, sections M and R? You just follow the signs, that's all. Let me tell you something, buddy. You're a fool to go out there without getting extra hazard pay. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot. It's been a very pleasant chatting with you. <laughs>
Exercise, Carl, because there isn't much room in the slammer. Are you listening to me? I said there's something out there. Uh huh. Well, you're under arrest, Dr. Koshakowski. Were you listen, under arrest for what? Uh, impersonating a doctor. I could have had you outside the morgue. What? And then there's trespassing in a security area. But I did. But uh, are you listening to? What are you doing to my camera? Uh -huh. Give me those pictures. Uh -huh. the, 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 Carl, I got pictures of it. This I'm... is a classified area. There are no pictures allowed. Yeah, but, uh, will you listen to me, please? I thought there was something suspicious about him right from the first. So I figured if I went along and gave him enough rope, he'd hang himself. Oh, you did, did you? Yes. Will you listen to me, please? We are listening, Carl. All right. Now, this is going to be very hard to believe. It's going to sound silly, but there is some kind of a strange reptilian lizard monster out there. I mean, none of us are safe. Carl, will you just come quietly? No, no, it's in Sector M. That, that's where Coogan... The lady asked you to leave quietly. Me, I don't care how you... No, 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 Watch the shoulder. Mr. Flaherty, I am terribly sorry. You won't be bothered by Kolchak anymore. Okay, fellas. All right, all right, all right. Just watch, watch. And you, you, you're pulling on the handcuffs. It, it, it all so tight. That's the thing. Just a second. I'll take charge of this man. Merely have one of your men sign a waiver. Won't take any of your time at all. Don't touch the goods. He's in my custody. I keep him. Now, he trespassed in a security area. That's my jurisdiction. I already had him on a previous count. Now, let's not argue. Very well. It's your responsibility. Yeah, who's that hard nose? Water department, can't you read? Water department? Uh, they're having some problems with the pipes downstairs, it, you know, because of the accident. Accident? That accident was caused by one big lizard. What does the water department want to bust me for? Huh? Leaky faucets? Listen, Carl. you all know that something's going on down there. Now, why don't you listen to me? Carl. Listen, that big lizard down there was at least eight. Carl, have you ever been maced? Maced? No, 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 I haven't, actually. Look, will you, will you, will you, will you, will you stop lifting so high, please? It hurts the arms. in here like you oh, are. Carl, Carl, I don't want to hear anything more about that giant newt. I want you to keep away from the authorities in Merrimont. Rip the lid off of this lizard creature affair. And I'm going to find out who those guys in the water department really are. And you, stop talking with your mouth full. Don't tell me what to do with my mouth. And what guys are you talking about? In what water department? Stay tuned. We'll hear the next installment. 
Yeah, hello. Is uh, Arnie Weissmore there? Arnie Weissmore? Arnie Weissmore? Isn't he in prison? No, of course not. He's out on parole. Uh, hello, Arnie. Hey, Carl Kolchak here. Yeah, I, I got a small job for you to do. No, absolutely not. No, look, in, I know he's my boss, but I don't want you to break his arms. No, Arnie. No, all I want you to do is deliver a package. Yeah, well, I can't give you the details right now, so I'll, I'll call you a little later. What did he say about me? Arnie? Not a thing. Carl, I don't want you to get involved with that crumb. Just drop the whole thing right now. Just drop the whole thing right, right now. Uh -huh. Just what did Lieutenant Irene Lamont do to you? Hmm? Did she run her fingers through your hair and tousle your curls and compliment you on your aftershave lotion? Now, don't be ridiculous. Well, she is a charming woman. Uh, yeah. But this was strictly an executive decision based on the study of the matter. Based on a study of her legs, you mean. Look, look, Carl, the lieutenant and I have an understanding like two professionals. I told her that I would agree to backpedal a while to keep you from hindering her investigation, and she in turn agreed that if anything major happened in Maramont, she would call the exclusive directly to me. To you? To me. Not to me. No. To you? Yes. You sucker. You better learn the tune to All Alone on the Telephone, because she ain't never going to call. They got the lid on this thing, and I think that it comes from very high up. If that were true, if that were the case, she would have told me about it. Oh, she would have? Yes. You really believe that? I do. You know, I think all that bicarbonate you've been drinking has put bubbles in your brain. The issue is not my intake of bicarbonate. The issue is how you follow my directives. Now, I'm trying to establish a professional working rapport with this lieutenant. Oh, that's... And I don't want you jeopardizing it. Now, you've aggravated this sweet young woman in spite of all the kindnesses she's extended to you. Kindness? Yes. That sweet young woman is about as kind as an SS Sturmborn Fuhrer. Now, Carl, now, I'm leaving. I'm going out to marry my... Vincenzo! Don't yell like you always do. It'll rile your bile. They make lousy pets. Hmm. Crocodiles. Not only won't they fetch your slippers, but they'll eat your feet. <laughs> You know, there's not one of these things stands upright like a man. Not one. Well, of course not. If God had wanted crocodiles to stand upright, he'd have given them alligator shoes. <laughs> oh, come on, Kolchak. These are the jokes. I used to do all the MC work in the stand-up comedy in the prison talent show. Yeah, well, I can see why they're anxious to put you out on parole. Listen, I'm not talking just about crocodiles. I'm talking about all these reptiles in here. I mean, there's not one like what I saw. It says in here, though, that some reptiles, you know, like sidewinder snakes here, it says that they're photophobic. Photophobic, it means that they don't like the light. Oh, good for them. Yeah. You ready to go? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You ready? Yeah. Yeah, this is it here, huh? Yep. So, are you sure this is going to do it? You're questioning my professional judgment now? Arnie, this is Kolshak you're rapping with. Remember Kolshak? I know your record. Look, that last problem with the Mexican border would have never happened if somebody would have remembered to soundproof the hearse properly and to put on lipstick. His wig was crooked, too. I mean, if you're going to run parrots into the country, you got to lay out some cash for decent soundproofing. Parrots. I'll never forget that feeling when that third voice in the back started squawking, Buenos dias! Buenos dias! Wah! All right, come on. You just make sure you get me that, right? Don't worry. Watch that! You are now a precision instrument.
specimens. Howard was fine when I left. I saw nothing unusual. Well, let's just hear it one more time. You're the last person to see Kimper alive. I've ever seen. Now put that down. Yeah, what are they? Uh, it's an alloy I've been working with. Now put it down. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, you sure this is not the agate that you and Howard Kimper found? No. I'll give you 30 seconds to leave. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Did, did you hear something? No, no. Get, get out! Yeah, yeah, right. Just as soon as you show me that agate uh, that you found, uh, now I won't bug you anymore. Where do you get after I have to show you anything? I am through letting people steal from me. Once on a dig in Utah, I slaved months to uncover some pleistocene strata. Yeah, it's, it, all, it's all right, Doc. It's okay. It's all, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to touch you. Th tell me, what, what do you think you've got in here that's so important that somebody want to steal it? That can't be that. See, it's funny, these look like eggshells. I mean, do, do, do these look like eggs to you? No. no. That's funny, you know. Dude, what, what do you know about reptiles? Nothing. They're not in my field. I put them down. Yeah, well, they're not in mine either, but I know one when I saw one, and I saw one. I've got a huge one here. Did you find these in Sector R? Now, I am tired of your questions. I have no desire to discuss reptiles with you or anything else, and I'll have you arrested again. Yeah, sure. sure. One more question, Doc, if you don't... shot that's been confiscated by the cops relate end to end, I'd have enough film to shoot War and Peace, including a travel log and a cartoon. Again, what were you and Verheiden talking about? Again, rocks. Carl, if he had any information that would shed light on this, you better start belching it up, or I guarantee you a graduate degree in license plate making down at the State Farm. Whatever happened to the sweet Irene Lamont that we all know and love? All those poor bums down in the press department are always singing that pretty refrain. Irene, Irene, the loveliest cop I've ever seen. You don't know how bad I can be. Oh, I got a pretty good idea, baby. Lieutenant Lamont, uh, if you don't mind. Hmm. Relax, Mr. Kolchak, relax. Cigarette? Uh, no, no thanks. No, I don't smoke. I read the Surgeon General's report. Look, 
I don't know how long I can hold off Miss Lamont. You know, she wants to bust you bad. And I don't know why you won't cooperate. Open up with me. Open up, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, you see, it's little things. Uh, like how you kept a lid on all this mess, General. Colonel. Colonel! <laughs> You'll make General. Yeah, you see, you're thinking maybe that there's more of these creatures around, huh? That maybe they'll get into your secret silos, your underground missile and sack bases down there. Maybe they have already, huh? Well, did you ever think that they might be down there in the subways, too, and underground tunnels, down in underground garages? Did you ever think about that? I mean, when are you going to warn the general public about this? When we feel the time is right. And who is we? Hey!
So here I am. In a few minutes, it'll be here, too. If I don't make it, if this tape is ever found, you'll at least know what happened. My only hope is it'll take this next and go. If it won't, then good luck. of its nesting place. Who knows? Maybe the government will find the nest, maybe they won't. We'll probably never know. But if you're in a subway or a pedestrian tunnel underneath a ballpark and you think you hear something moving in the walls, it may not be your imagination. Take my advice. Don't walk. Run to the nearest exit. (laughs) 